today we're going to be talking about um, kind of the breakdown of the CDC vulnerabilities, uh, how to fix them, uh, and different other tidbits of the competition. And then if you guys have questions or complaints, we can try and answer those. Um, so I created the aggregate box, so I'll be talking about that. Um, just a general idea of what that box is if you didn't compete in the CDC. Um, this was like a John Deere farming scenario. So the aggregate box was like a web application that controlled several farming devices, um, including the combine uh, Raspberry Pi that you guys got on Friday, and also the tractor and silo. Um, and so that was all over like Telnet communication, a proprietary protocol that Sean on the lab uh, created called Agro. Uh, and so it communicated plain text over Telnet uh, to basically control the different devices. Um, so I have this slide here that talks about the major vulnerabilities, which you may or may not have found. Um, this one's rather obvious. So the aggregate application is just a web app. It's a Django app. Um, but nothing was protected by authentication, despite there being user authentication on the app. Um, and so basically, anyone could see or access the different views and APIs uh, to control the tractors and um, also the orders page, which had a flag just displayed there uh, for everyone to see. So um, the easy solution to that is just using um, Django's built-in authentication and then uh, the parameters to uh, protect a view. So I'm trying to pull that up right now. Um, Uh, but essentially, as I'm getting this pulled up, um, there's, it's really easy to protect a view in Django. Um, documentation for Django says how to do it. But the, if you have like a class-based view, um, there's a uh, mix-in which you can use, which mix-ins are basically um, different functionality that you can add to a class-based view. Or you could do, um, I don't know the exact terminology for it, but basically a, a tag uh, on top of a function-based uh, view that would also require a specific permission or check that the user is authenticated. Um, so let me just go ahead and pull up the actual aggregate uh, application. Come on, 98.20. All right, so this is what the aggregate application looks like. Um, ideally, you'd have a login page here and not just this open, but it was open. Um, and then inside devices, you would have put your tractor, silo, and combine. Um, but this all did not have to be publicly available uh, despite it being available by default. Um, but essentially, you're given this little command prompt here that you can talk to the devices with. Uh, and so there, I'll talk about the vulnerabilities behind Agro in general. Um, but this basically allowed you to, to talk straight to the device. So um, there were a lot of things um, with the Agro protocol that I'll get to in a second. Um, but in terms of just this application, one of the things that I did in multiple places is try and make the uh, sensitive pieces, like the pin, and then uh, on the database or the orders page, I made the flag uh, very large. It's my hope that somebody would have this open and red team could just like peek around and snap pictures, because um, they've done that in the past. But anyway, uh, I guess that's not really vulnerability, but something, just minor details. Um, but yeah, so back here in the orders page, I don't have any orders up. Um, but if the order was up, this description field was just very large, you could see it. So the orders page only had to be viewed by a few groups of users. So again, just locking that down using the Django uh, built-in um, groups and users uh, is very uh, practically trivial to do. So you can define different groups here um, and even tie that in with Active Directory, which was one of the requirements. Um, so let me just go back to my slides here. Um, so the flag, you could see in the order view, obviously protecting that's a big deal. Did anybody find the uh, PHP shell on port 65,000? What's that? I saw the flag. Okay, yeah, so uh, there was a shell listening on port 65,000. A lot of, uh, so standard 
N map scan might not necessarily get all the ports, which uh, you may not may or may not have seen this in an N map scan if you didn't define all ports. But anyway, um, up near the upper limit of, of what ports you can choose to run things on uh, was just just uh, PHP shell. It's kind of similar to C99. I didn't want to be very uh, generic, so I just found a random one, and I think this is Arabic. Um, but anyway, yeah, so a couple of red teamers had fun with this. Um, but yeah, just checking basically what ports are listening, and firewalls would have prevented all this. Um, so I think that's one of the big takeaways from this is uh, checking inbound and outbound ports uh, via firewalls, uh, host based and also network based. So, uh, but this one allowed you to do a number of things. I mean, you had PHP info, you could run commands on the box, pull down files, all that stuff. So, pretty typical um, uh, web shell that you would throw somewhere. Uh, oh, yeah, so one red teamer specifically said this helped them uh, gain uh, root privilege. Um, so, the sudoers file, um, actually, I'll just go ahead and open that up. Um, so obviously you can allow, give users privilege um, access uh, via like pseudo commands. And so it's always good to check the, uh, oops, my bad. It's always good to check the sudoers file to make sure that there are no entries that shouldn't be there. And for this one, um, if I type by sudo, um, and I gotta remember where I put it. I'll just do this. So I threw in here. Um, so basically, all users uh, can run and map. Uh, and I think Python is also in here somewhere um, via, uh, as basically, as root with root privileges. So um, with Python, it's extremely easy to get basically pop a shell um, that would then give you root access or super user privileges on the box. Um, and, and same thing with nmap, it's a bit more difficult to do, but it is possible. Um, so it's always good to check sudoers file uh, and clean that out thoroughly to make sure that, uh, oh, and there's the Python one down here. So same thing, just the uh, Python uh, executable there. So, um, so that's another good one to check. Uh, we usually always mess with the sudoers file. Um, so again, locking down those privileges that, um, that your users don't need access to. Um, did anyone find the SSH key sitting in root? Okay, a few people, cool. So uh, that's another typical thing we'll do is just drop uh, SSH keys on the box, uh, usually for root, and then just, uh, I actually sent them over in the SecDSM Slack. Um, so some of you might have seen that, I don't know. Um, I just sent that to SecDSM and, and uh, hoped that they would spread, spread that around, and I think a few of them did. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty uh, typical too. Um, FTP at, by default allowed access to the entire box um, with an anonymous user, so not needing any sort of um, password. Again, locking that down. That, that was a required service. Uh, however, obviously you can go and edit uh, FTP configuration files or just completely rebuild the service. Um, but yeah, you, by default you were given uh, FTP access to the whole machine. You could write anywhere, read anywhere, uh, and so clearly that's a problem as the the uh, scenario document only said you had to do it to one directory. Um, so locking that down is always, always good. Um, OK, so the tractor so silo and combine were all running a custom piece of software called Agro, which is also the protocol that you spoke with, which was just over Telnet or Netcat. Um, it's just basic uh, sockets um, communication. Um, so one of the things that some people found by actually fuzzing the program was that for the pins, um, uh, basically if it equals zero, um, less than zero or greater than, I think this is what, just uh, greater than a million, or um, it would let you in, or if you actually have the pin, it will let you in. So uh, many of you found that. Um, we do apologize that we weren't able to get to everyone's patches. What we're going to do in the future is because we got so many requests on that Friday, um, is we're going to cut that off if we do black boxes again um, to say like Wednesday to make sure that we actually get everyone's patch requests in and, and uh, finish. So um, it's our fault. We don't believe that was too fair, but uh, technically everyone was affected by that. Um, so we, we did our best with the limited resources we have, but we took that mistake and we'll uh, try, to, try to make that better in the future by cutting that off like Wednesday, if not earlier, um, for patch requests. But anyway, this was uh, one of the big issues that a lot of you found. 
um, and reported, so that's good. Um, so, and then another thing was, um, I didn't personally see this, maybe someone else can comment, but I believe if you hit F um, before, like as it was asking for the pin, it would just, would it spit it out or what would it do, just let you yeah, in? Yeah, it spit it out and okay. say access denied. Yeah, so it just gave you the pin and then you could get access. Um, There's the flag. Yeah. So, oh yeah, the flag, sorry. Uh, it spit out the flag, yeah. Um, so yeah, I can just demonstrate what that looks like real quick here. Uh, so if I just tell him actually, this. Ah. there we go. Um, so yeah, I just if I hit F. Oh, so there wasn't a flag planted, but um, flag and space flag. <laughs> My bad. Uh, was it exit? Yeah. There he is, capital. All right, my bad. Um, so yeah, and then it would print out your flag. Uh, and another thing, if uh, again, if we entered like uh, what, just zero? Yeah. So, so um, I think Nick, who's not here tonight, um, ran some sort of fuzzing uh, software against this and was able to determine that those pins were not accepted or were accepted illegitimately. Uh, and so that was uh, kind of cool for him to do that Friday night and then tell us about that. Um, I believe those are the only two really glaring vulnerabilities with this software. Um, the big thing though was with the combine and the whole Pi setup is uh, this is all over an unencrypted channel so anyone can view basically the pins flying over. So that was the whole goal with like the wireless thing was that when given the pies, people would try to set up some sort of encryption or uh, protection behind that sensitive data that's flying over the air. Um, and that's why we forced the whole like open Wi-Fi network uh, thing. Um, so that, that was all the, the goals behind that. Um, what else do we have? Uh, default passwords is always an issue in CDCs. Um, I, don't, I think we're potentially working on statistics, statistics maybe not. Um, I don't know about statistics, but a raw dump of, okay. uh, of stuff. All right, anyway, uh, default passwords, always an issue. Make sure you change those. Um, that's about all I have for aggregate and aggro. So I don't know if you have something you want to discuss. All I have is flags. Okay. Lots of flags. Uh, what else do we have? All right, so some key takeaways, key points. Um, obviously changing passwords, getting rid of users that you don't need, like CDC. Uh, updating the boxes, any sort of packages, uh, making sure that those packages are coming from a legitimate source and not like an evil, uh, you're not configured for an evil update server or anything like that. Um, configuration files huge. Again, we, we talked about FTP, we talked about pseudo-worst file, uh, looking through those files and making sure there's nothing that um, sticks out that, uh, that shouldn't be there. Um, Okay, so logging and monitoring. I had a blue teamer that had um, a Splunk instance set up, and they actually did like key logging on all the boxes, so they were able to tell what users were running which commands, which I thought was really, really cool. Uh, and this helped them greatly with determining like what the attackers were doing. Um, not that this would transfer to industry very well, because that would be a privacy issue, but for your encapsulated case of a CDC, it's a pretty cool solution. Um, so they were able to monitor all the commands, that were being entered, um, and that really helped them in the uh, the intrusion reports. So that's, I guess, maybe potentially an idea for the future. Um, usability, uptime, very important. Uh, you people really get railed when green green team can't do their job, um, and I think a big part of that is making sure your green team docs are clear on exactly what users need to be able to do and how to do it, because um, they could be people who you know use computers just to surf the internet and don't know much beyond that. So making sure that they understand uh, how to do the tasks that they're given uh, step by step. And then uh, we discussed this before, but you know, port 65,000, if you have some sort of firewall that's just blanket blocking everything except for the required services, you don't even really have to worry about these random shells, um, especially outbound. Outbound traffic is still very important to filter. Um, so making sure that you know, things are going in and out of the right ports uh, will really help prevent any sort of reverse shells, web shells, uh, and funky things that Red Team's gonna try to uh, get back traffic to their machine. So 
uh, firewalls, uh, host base, but really network based are definitely your friend in the CDCs. Um, do you want to talk about flags at all? Sure. Okay. Um, Wacker, since we're on the Pies, did I miss anything with the Pies? Um, basically, wireless. With the goal was to have red team show up and then sniff the traffic um, and try to find pins and flags going uh, unencrypted across uh, the air. Yeah, since the program was written, um, it was just a TCP socket, so nothing fancy, uh, all unencrypted as well. So the way you could secure against that is just throw your pie on a like VPN, uh, and then just encrypt all your traffic, uh, and then forward anything through the VPN to the pie. Then yeah, so that so something like OpenVPN would have been a pretty quick solution to that problem. Yeah, which um, I was kind of hoping someone would do, but no one, I guess, even came up with the idea that night okay. for that. Yeah, so uh, our ideas are kind of nifty, but. So, um, but yeah, we have these pies. John Deere donated the pies, so we're probably going to be reusing them in a future CDC. Our goal is to have them, um, you know, uh, ready at it, probably an earlier time. We're really rushing with all the other stuff we had to get done, um, and so probably flashing those ahead of time. That way, you guys maximize the time you have with the pies. Uh, but we probably will be bringing those back at some point, uh, just because of the cool wireless capability and the fact that Red Team can actually touch them and not break any laws. Um, and that was the other thing we got a few complaints about is the penalties for unlocked computers. Um, and so that's a, that's a big, I would say, issue with just security in general is unlocked computers. And so technically the penalty out of all your points was pretty small, uh, but people were sending complaints in regardless, um, which is fine. But I guess our response to that is it's a big deal if you leave your laptop unlocked in a hostile environment and walk away for 20 minutes or more. Um, and so we find that pretty unacceptable and I think industry would as well. Um, so that's something we really just want that's more for your benefit is just uh, kind of hammering into your head that even if you step away for a minute to go talk to somebody, just lock your computer. Uh, and that's the, the angle there. We just want to really get that across. And so um, that's why we're doing the, uh, the laptop checks. Um, but like we've said before, we've removed the whole red team can touch your device and mess with it. Um, so that's no more. But uh, we will continue to do the penalties for online computers during fire drills. So just lock your computers when you get up, and uh, it's a pretty easy fix. Um, and it's it's good to get in that habit of doing that. So, um, yeah, you want to? Do you need a plug-in? Yeah. Okay. This is only cool if it actually shows up on the screen. <laughs> uh, so what I have in front of me is a CSV. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I've so got all of one, type two is. <laughs> okay, so what I have here is a wonderful list of uh, every flag that was captured by the red team. Uh, on this side, we have what red team said as to how they actually captured your flag. And on this side, we have what people thought happened to their flags. Um, you'll notice as I scroll down here that this one on the right there's a lot of empty spaces. Uh, oh, I've scrolled farther than Excel can keep up because Excel is an objectively bad program. Uh, the, the moral of the story there is you can earn points back on your flags, up to 50% of the points lost, uh, just by submitting uh, a description of what happened. If you get it right, you get half of your points back. If you got it wrong, you might get some of your points back if you were close. If you just waffle and say that uh, Red Team talked to the spirits of Bill Gates and figured out how to do it, then you're going to get no points. But uh, the, um, come on, Excel. <sighs> OK, whatever. <laughs> um, so you can see that. Uh, well, you can't because it would take too long to read all these. But a lot of these ones on the right said not not found. And then you can just see massive dumps of, like this one, Team 4. I don't know if you, Team 4 is here or not, but they're going to get shamed. Uh, team 4, Red Team went and tried to dump your silo flag. And was it? Yeah, it was the silo. Tried to dump the flag, and it wasn't planted. 
uh, plant your flags, people, because if it's not planted and we come ask to see it and it's not there, we just give it to Red Team because they tried. Uh, so that said, um, if you're curious about your own flags, I'm logged in as a blue teamer here. Uh, if you go to dashboard and you click on any of your flags that's any color that isn't green, you can go and you can look and you can see how it got, uh, how it got pwned. For this one, uh, default pin and it didn't work. And then they got the flag anyways, poor Chris Affiliates. Uh, so that any blue teamer can do that, not for obviously the Chris Affiliates, only the Chris Affiliates can see that. But that said, um, if you guys who were there have any questions about any, how any of these specific flags got taken, I can pull those out of the database real quick and we can just kind of look over the capture notes for that specific flag. Uh, if there was one that everyone was really confused how they lost it. No? Cool. Well, uh, does anyone have any other questions about anything relating to the CDC? We have a decent representation of the white team here, so. Also the creator of the infamous dub dub box. Yeah, he's here. You can beat him around the head with coats. No? All right, well, I guess that does it for us then. Unless you want to get up here and talk some more, Daniel. That's probably about it. Cool. Anyone else on White Team have anything to say? No? Okay, cool. Bye.